Hey guys, it's uh, Jay Anthony. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in as always. Uh, this video is a little bit delayed. Apologize for that. I have uh, quite a few videos I owe you guys. and I'm still trying to get out about one a week. For those of you that asked, I try to do about one video a week. Um, you know, this is a hobby for me. It's not my career at this point. So that's about what I can commit to you and I'm doing my best to keep up. Um, as you can see below, this video is going to be all about the sizing of watches. Um, something I consider doing for a while, and uh, I've seen quite a few comments recently, so we're going to talk about that. Um, so those of you that are wondering, there are, you know, some of those videos that I owe you. One of those is on Seiko and why Seikos are just awesome watches and why you should buy one. Um, this watch is has been delayed, but it's still on its way, and that's the reason I'm holding off on this video. So those of you guys that are in the know know what this watch is. Um, hint, it's coming from Japan, and it's <laughs> sold in Japan at this point. Uh, there's a couple retailers outside of Japan. I should say, but um, this watch is on its way, and I'd really like to have this watch included in my video review. So once this watch shows up, I can kind of get a sense of what I want to do and get that video put out there for you. I also had another user submit a video of their watch, um, so that'll be coming out soon. It's an Omega uh, Speedmaster, and uh, I'll get that guys out to you. I have lots of videos coming up, so thanks for bearing with me while I uh, you know, try to make time to get these things out there. I really look forward to doing these for you guys, and as always, really appreciate the feedback and support. So today we're going to talk about sizing of watches. Now I'm going to show you how I do this. I want to do the caveat that you know there's inherent risk in sizing the watch on your own. Um, the chief among which is you could easily scratch the bracelet. Um, beyond that you could actually break some of the pins in the bracelet. There's all sorts of things that can happen. So that and the way that I do it is probably not the most preferred method of doing it. You know professional jeweler I think is your best bet if there's something you're not comfortable with. Um, so as I show you what I do, again, I, I promise that I'd share with you guys how I do it. Just be aware that how I do it, there is a risk that you could damage the watch. So um, in just a sec, I'm gonna walk you in, over to my workbench um, in my little workshop and I'll show you some of the tools that I use. A lot of it's just kind of been piecemealed together. I don't have an official watch making kit. I just use stuff that happens to work. Um, so we're gonna get into that. Again, this is how I do it. Um, do this at your own risk. Again, I, there's, there's inherent risk that you can damage the watch, but again, this is how I would do it. And uh, beyond that, I uh, again appreciate this, uh, this support so much, and I'm a little bit behind on comments as well. Um, I, I may just decide to put together a video of uh, responding to your questions on a video, so that might be a better way for me to handle that. So I'll think about that as well. All right, talk long enough. Let's uh, go take a look at some of the tools I use, and then we'll, we'll look at sizing a watch bracelet. All right, guys, welcome to uh, my really messy workshop. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is get yourself a nice set of small jeweler size screwdrivers. Um, oops, just bumped the camera. Basically, what you need to work on most watches is going to be a small Phillips, or not Phillips, a flathead type screwdriver, um, such as this guy here. Um, a screwdriver this size is perfect for removing the uh, bracelets off of watches because this is perfect for applying leverage on a push pin to remove the bracelet. Um, and it can be used for all sorts of other things, uh, just from activating uh, pins on the movement. I've used that for this before. Um, but this is something you guys are all going to want to invest in if you want to do anything with watches. Um, especially if you're like me and you like to change the bracelets and the straps on your watches a lot. Um, a small little flathead screwdriver like this is exactly what you're going to need to get that done. Um, and actually, they also make these little sets. Which I'm unable to open. Here we go. It's a mess, but you can get a nice little jeweler screwdriver set. So when you'll uh, when we go upstairs and we'll, we'll you might see one of these sitting on my uh, my desk. But these things are perfect. These are what I use to do majority of the stuff I do with my watches. Again, as far as removing bracelets and removing straps, this is what you need to get the job done easily. There's other ways to do it. There's actually an official tool as well. However, this is definitely what I recommend. So that's kind of the first thing I would look at. Put that over here. Um, something else you're going to want. So, again, pardon the mess. Um, I've talked about before just general watchmaking tools. This is uh, the demagnetizer. Um, so if you want to have uh, any information on this, I have a video on demagnetizing watches. But the big thing you're going to want to buy is this guy right here. And again, sorry for the glare. Um, but this is actually a watch pin remover. So there's three kinds of watch bracelets. Uh, I'll try to give you a little bit of an overview when we go up to my office. 
Um, but basically there's push pin links, which is what this is for, and it's the most common type of bracelet, and I'll go over that in a sec. Um, and then you have screw out links, which are really easy. And screw out links, again, you can just use a micro screwdriver like this. This is perfect, so if you have like a Rolex um, or a couple other high-end Swiss watches, they use screw out links. As long as you have a tiny little screwdriver like this, you can actually unscrew the links yourself. It's very, very easy. That's actually my favorite type of bracelet. Um, but most people have to use push pin links. And again, in a sec, I'll take you upstairs and show you. Now, what this guy will do, it is it'll actually push the pin outside of the bracelet, but then you're gonna need something to actually pull the pin outside of the bracelet. So this will push it out where you can grab it, and then you're gonna need something to grab it. So, let me uh, open this up. For many, many years, I used to use like a needle nose plier to do that. However, I've actually broken off pins doing this. And so now I've actually changed my technique a little bit. And now I use a pair of pliers where I can get more grip on the head. Um, this gives me a better leverage and I'm less likely to snap off one of the pins. So when you're adjusting pin bracelet, I recommend you get one of these pin removers. Um, you can get these for like three to 10 bucks depending on the source online and then you're gonna need a pair of pliers. All right, so that's kind of the tools you're gonna need. Now let's uh, go upstairs and we'll take a look at how this works in theory. All right guys, to start, you're gonna to wanna to have a hard surface to work on um, because you're gonna need something that you can kind of rest your elbows on so you can kind of have a good firm grip on the bracelet. Um, doing this on you know, wood desk probably isn't the greatest idea because if you slip, you could damage the desk. Um, I would do this done in my workshop, but there's really no way for me to kind of sit down there. So um, I'm going to do it here. Again, just a caveat, you're going to want some place where you can kind of sit in a comfortable position where you can get a firm grip on the bracelet. And just be aware too, if you slip, again, you're holding sharp metal objects, there's chances, opportunity you could damage stuff around you. So not the best location for me to do this, but this is just where I'm going to do it. You know, I have a coaster here, I guess I could rest it on that coaster. So Again, just make sure that when you go to do this, you have a place where you can get comfortable and you're going to want to be sitting down probably on a desk again or some hard surface where you can get a firm grip on what you're doing. And uh, I've laid out some bracelets here and I'm going to go ahead and adjust the camera view in a sec and we can kind of go through how this works out. All right, so again, here we've got our tools. Now, again, this is the, uh, the pin remover that I talked about downstairs in my workshop. Go ahead and take this guy out. When you get one of these, it's going to come like this. Typically, they'll have a pin preloaded and it just unscrews. Apologize, there might be some glare because this thing is shiny. There's also a table on the bottom. Typically, you can adjust, and this is just to raise or lower the bracelet. I'll show you how that works in a sec. They're also going to give you probably some extra pins. I don't know if you can see this through here. Um, there's different size pins because some bracelets have different size openings than others. So what is a pin bracelet? Well, here's a good example. You guys always ask what I'm wearing in videos. So here's my Shinola Runwell. And this is typically what you'll see. So all the links are held in together with a pin. Um, some people call them a push pin because that's basically what they are. And if you look on the bracelet, um, you'll see an arrow. And this arrow shows you the direction that the pin must be pushed out of the bracelet to dis to take apart the bracelet. And so a push pin bracelet is just that. There's pins that are in these little shallow openings that need to have pressure applied to them to push them through the bracelet so that you can take the bracelet apart. Um, higher end watches, uh, Rolex among others, they'll use a screw out link. And again, if you have a screw out link, you just need yourself a tiny little screwdriver and you can actually just screw out that pin that holds it in. It's super easy. I wish every bracelet used screw out links, but they don't. So when you have something like this, you need a tool like this guy. Now I don't want to do this on uh, my Shinola Runwell because I've already got that sized. So I've got some sample bracelets here for you. You know, here's a, uh, this is the bracelet that came off of my uh, SARZ005. Um, just a standard basic bracelet. But the thing you'll notice again is this is also a push pin bracelet. So like the Shinola, here's your pins. Here's the direction arrows. Now, before I take this apart, there is another type of bracelet out there you guys may see. And that's something like this. This is something you're only gonna see, sorry, the glare is terrible, on really, really cheap watches. Let me, uh, wow, this is terrible. There we go. Um, 
there's a little notch on these bracelets. I'll show you how one of the links goes together, but basically there's like a slider that slides in and holds the bracelet together. Let me take, here's a pin that I've removed. So what you basically have on this, this is just part of a pin, is you have, here's a link, and then rather than a pin, you have basically this wedge that slides in. And um, the wedge basically slides in, and I, I'm not going to push it in all the way, but basically that's what holds the bracelet together. And the way you actually fix one of these bracelets, um, you can try to apply leverage with one of these screwdrivers and get it in here into one of these little grooves to apply pressure to push this thing outward. Um, but since these things are such a pain, and honestly I'm not really good at adjusting them, they they can take me a long time to get right. Uh, I'll save that for another video potentially, but just so you know, there are really cheap bracelets out there that use that kind of a system. Um, and actually some of the cheap Orients too use a similar system. Um, oops, well, you didn't get to see it, but um, the way you tell one of those bracelets, and again, I apologize for the glare, is there's not going to be any pins on the bracelet at all on the side view. It's just going to look like solid links, almost kind of like with a wedge stuck in the middle of the link. Anyway, this is what you're most likely going to see. So let's go ahead and uh, I'll show you to set this thing up. Let me see if I can zoom this in on the bench here. All right, so step one is you're going to want to put the bracelet into the holder. So the first thing you want to take a note of is the direction of the bracelet. So again, there's these little arrows. That's telling you the direction the arrow or, or the, the direction the pin needs to be pushed out. So you're going to line up the side of that arrow. Again, because the arrow needs is pointing this way. It's telling you the pin needs to get pushed out this way. You're going to line it up on your uh, holder such that this little uh, rod here is going to line up with that hole to push pressure on that pin. So what you're going to do, there's a table right here that you can raise and lower to raise the bracelet up to the level of that rod. And then what you're going to do, and I apologize, it's very hard to film this and also uh, do this. You're going to apply enough pressure to get that into that hole. So now you can see I can shake this. It's actually in that hole. And what it's going to do as I tighten back here, it's just going to push that pin into this notch. And that's one of the reasons you really want to use one of these pin pushers. Um, what you could do, and I've seen people do this, is they've taken like a thumbtack or something and a hammer, and they've like hammered at this pin with like a thumbtack to push the pin out rather than using one of these. And the problem with that is two things. One, if you're trying to do this on a flat surface, like this desk right here, you're basically just going to jam the pin into your desk, and you're going to create a hole in your desk, which is not what you want. Or if it's a really hard surface, it's just going to apply the surface is going to apply pressure back on the pin and you're not going to be able to push the pin anywhere. You basically need somewhere for that pin to be displaced as you're applying pressure on it, which is why there's this gap right here. Um, and again, I'm so sorry about this terrible glare. But basically what we're going to do, let me back this off a little bit, is you're just going to wind this until it goes all the way through. Then you're going to back it out. And as you can see now, that pin that's in the bracelet is starting to get to the point where it can be removed. Now, every bracelet's different. Some bracelets are really, really easy. Some bracelets, not so much. Um, like this one, I can just pull out. But the reason you want to have a pair of pliers around is, let's just say, like Shinola bracelets are a pain in the ass. You really need to put a lot of pressure on the pin to get it out. Let's just grip it with the pliers and then pull it out. That's why I recommend you have pliers because... You know, this bracelet's extremely easy to take apart. There are a lot of bracelets that you need to put a ton of force to get this pin out of the bracelet. It's really annoying. Anyway, so that's how it comes apart. And then, if you want to take out a complete link, you need to take out two corresponding pins, right? So, by taking out, if I want to take out the link between my two thumbs, I need to remove the, the, the band on either side of it, right? So I've taken off the link right in front of it, and then I'd have to take out the pin here so I can pull this piece out. So we can go ahead and do that. Again, lining up the arrow with our little hole. Again, I would be doing this on the surface, but for the sake of this video, I'm kind of having to do this in midair here. 
again, screw it in. And what that's doing is again, it's pushing the rod through and it's actually gonna push the pin out the other side. I'm gonna back it off. Again, pins here. This one again, fortunately is only finger tight. Now I've removed a link. And then what you need to do is, so we've taken a link, a link out of the bracelet and now we can just put the bracelet back together. And then all you need to do is reverse what you did ahead. So look at the bracelet, take one of your push pins and grab it. Oh, it's not easy to do on camera. And you're gonna have to slide it into the slot back in and then you know it'll go so far and then it'll stop and then what I'll use is a hard surface to kind of get it in so here's a here's a coaster and I'll just push the pin in and there you go I've just removed a link from this bracelet now typically what you want to do uh, when you're sizing a bracelet is you want to have it sorry you want to have it where it rests pretty evenly on your on your wrist you don't want it because sometimes if you take too many links off of one side or the other, the watch will sit like this or the watch will sit like that. You want to make sure that as you're removing links, A, that you have a little bit of slack in the bracelet like I do, um, especially if you live anywhere like I do where it can get humid because your wrist will swell and you want to have some flexibility in your wrist. So make sure you give yourself a little bit of extra room for your wrist to swell if it gets hot out and it should be comfortable. And I like a little bit of ability to slide my watches back and forth. So make sure that when you're doing that, try to balance the links you're taking out on both sides so that the watch will sit well in the middle of your wrist. That's kind of your ultimate goal there. So, you know, typically on these bracelets, um, see I have two on this side and I have two left on this side, uh, actually three left. So I took one out on this side. So try the watch back on and see if it fits you well. And uh, if it fits well, great. If not, when you take another link out, then take one from this side so that now you have, you'll have the bracelet again balanced with two on each side. You want to try to keep the bracelet balanced. Now, if you find that the watch is actually pretty close to where you'd want it to be, um, and you, taking out a link might make it actually too tight for you, a lot of bracelets have what's called a micro adjustment. And if you look up on here on the clasp, again, sorry for this terrible glare, you'll see these little pinholes. What you can do is if you can get something to push a little pin in there, let me see if I can use one of these guys. No, it's too big. Um, you know what? Let me do this. So this is not what this is made for. But basically what you can do is there's a spring bar. And uh, these uh, clasp very much like the head of the watch. Oops, just popped it out. And then you can remove it. Here it is. So this is what a spring bar looks like for those of you who aren't familiar. A spring bar is basically just a, a, it is exactly what it sounds like. It's a bar with springs on either end. So it has collapsible ends on it. So you can depress them and then they expand back out. And what you can do is, you know, let's say it was hooked up on the last slot here. Again, sorry for this glare, this is terrible. Um, what you can do is you can move it up one notch or back one notch to get a smaller adjustment on the bracelet. So if it was on the first hole the first time, if I put it on the second hole now, and you just need to apply a little pressure to get that pin back underneath, it'll re-expand off you heard it click. Now I've just moved it from this hole to this hole. I've taken up a little bit of slack in the bracelet. So you might want to do that as well, depending on how much slack you have in the bracelet and how much uh, you think you need to take out of it to make it comfortable for you. So if the watch fits you really well and it just needs a little bit of adjustment, I would start here and try to do a micro adjustment. Again, this is just a little push pin, get some pressure on the pin and then move it to another slider. If you need a little bit more you know, room in the point where you're removing links like I just did, then you're going to want to follow that process. So hopefully this was helpful to you guys. Again, I apologize for the glare, um, but that's kind of how that works. And I guess for those of you two that are curious how to remove a bracelet from a watch, since I'm already here, you can do this on my Shinola here. So, if you'll see that pushpin I just showed you on the, uh, the clasp itself, there's one right here. And basically what you need to do is you need to get a little flathead screwdriver in here and push back on the pin to release the tension. So let me uh, grab my jeweler screwdriver here. There you go. 
So when you click it, and sorry for the glare, you'll see that it um, when you depress this pin, it'll pull it away from the inside of the case, and you're able to release it from the bracelet. And again, that's what it is. It's a push pin. This is what holds on 99.9% .9 of your bracelets to your watch. Um, same thing if you have a leather band. They use push pins. So this little pin goes on here. Put that down. And then if you want to reattach it, you'll see, again, these holes on the case. Line up the pin with the hole. And you have to apply a little pressure on the other side to get it in and I'll click back into place so hopefully this was helpful you helpful to you again I apologize I don't know why this camera is giving me so much glare um, it's very difficult to shoot this um, but hopefully conceptually you kind of understand what I did here and uh, hopefully this was helpful so uh, as always really appreciate you guys watching my videos um, please feel free to comment rate and subscribe and stay tuned for future content Again, I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you.